I am pleased to welcome Dr. David Gill, who is the director of the Memory Center at Unity, part of Rochester Regional Health, with us. Welcome back to the studio. Thank you very much. We were uh, talking about Alzheimer's disease the last time you were here. We will do so again this morning. Uh, and one development since your last visit, uh, we've learned Sandra Day O'Connor, the former Supreme Court Justice, uh, announcing she's in the early stages of dementia. Um, I'm struck by the fact, doctor, that even as we make strides in research, it seems like more and more people are being diagnosed with Alzheimer's, dementia, some version of memory loss. Absolutely. You know, it's always courageous when someone like Sandra Day O'Connor comes out to announce that she has Alzheimer's disease. There's still quite a stigma against that, and it's courageous to have somebody do that and bring attention to it, and also show that, especially in the early stages, you can live with the disease um, fairly functionally and really live an uh, enjoyable life. And so it's important that people like her do that. Um, as people age and as the baby boomers come of age, the numbers of people with Alzheimer's disease is going to skyrocket. And that's a real challenge for us here in our community and across the nation and the world. Right now, there are about 5 million people with Alzheimer's disease, and that's predicted to triple in the next uh, 10 to 20 years and may even go beyond that. Um, and so that's a real challenge for us that we need to be aware of uh, being able to diagnose, treat, and manage people uh, with the disorder. Let's get to the front part of that, the diagnose part and the progression of the disease. How people go from maybe showing a symptom to getting to the point where someone can clinically say you are suffering from this disease. The interesting thing about Alzheimer's disease is that the brain changes that start um, and cause Alzheimer's disease we think begin maybe 20 or 30 years before the symptoms actually start. So people in their 40s and 50s, maybe that's when we should intervene and find lifestyle changes or medications that might prevent those changes. And then slowly as they build up, they become enough in the brain to cause memory problems um, that are kind of minor and we think are part of normal aging. Um, and then slowly over time become severe enough that they impact someone's life. How is research uh, aiding the work that you're doing on a daily basis? Research really aids us in several ways. Right now, some of the studies to show that how we diagnose Alzheimer's disease can be more accurate. So we have things like PET scans and the newer PET scans that look at amyloid and tau, spinal taps that look at the proteins amyloid and tau that are part of Alzheimer's disease have allowed us to be much more accurate about diagnosis. And then the next step is treatment. Um, and so obviously what we need next are exciting, groundbreaking new research to show that we can treat it. And there are some glimmers of hope there with some recent studies to show that there might be ways to slow it down and maybe improve symptoms beyond what we can do right now. For families locally, what resources are available? Well, the most important research or resource is always the Alzheimer's Association. Mm -hmm. um, so they are in every community um, across the nation um, and have resources for support and diagnosis and treatment. And we work very closely with them. So, of course, the Memory Center at Unity and across Rochester Regional Health, um, going to our website and the association's website are really the best place to start. We'll leave it there. Doctor, thank you as always. Appreciate your visit. Thank you very much. Uh, he mentioned uh, those online sources. We'll share them on our site as well. You'll find them posted at rochesterfirst.com.